Hello, my name is Alexandra Leon. I'm here with the Samuel Proctor Oral History Program at the University of Florida. I'm interviewing here today at White Springs, Florida with... Angelica McGee. And... Sandy Cook. So let's get started with our first question. We're here at the Florida Folk Festival. So how did you first hear about the festival and what attracted you to it? Well, I was an employee. I worked for the Florida Park Service for 37 years. This was early on in my career when Stephen Foster uh, first became a state park. It was prior to 1977 or so. It was operated by the Florida Department of State, the uh, folk, folk history program, and they operated the state park. And so they turned it over to the Florida Park Service and it became a state park. And uh, so they had to hire state park people and I was already in the park service. So I became the first assistant park manager after it became a state park. So I had not heard about the Folk Festival or Stephen Foster prior to that. I was assigned to work here in 19, I think 1979. And that's how I discovered it. So tell me about your first like festival experience. Well, again, I was I was assigned here as a park employee, as assistant park manager, and I was I was responsible for part of the park operations, and so it was um, a pretty big event. And back then there was the Florida Folk Festival as well as well as some bluegrass festivals that were hosted here. So I really didn't. In, get to participate in the festival or enjoy the festival because as as a uh, park employee you work from daylight to dark and um, so I got a little taste of it you know just going around working and you know handling maintenance issues and personnel issues and staffing issues and visitor issues uh, listening to a little bit of music but uh, it wasn't until after I left at, and was transferred went to another park that I came back as a visitor and a volunteer and uh, got to you know, enjoy the music and the festivities and the uh, things like that. Could you tell us about your experience with the community of people that come here? Well, I think the Folk Festival has different groups of people. A lot of people come from far and away and then there's the people, the local people of Hamilton County and White Springs that um, probably aren't as connected to the park, weren't back then, don't have as much invested, but it's a boom to the economy because it's a small, I think Hamilton County is the smallest county in Florida. It's very rural. So I think it does help the community a little bit. And the, I think since, um, since 1979, when I worked here, I think the community has embraced uh, the Folk Festival and the park a little bit more. There's a citizen support organization that really helps the park a lot, and a lot of the local residents are more involved with the park. And um, so, when I was here, it was I didn't I didn't work with the community very much. That was in 1979, but that's changed a lot. How has it changed? Like I said, I think the community has embraced the park, the festival. They're more, um, uh, you know, they're more involved with, you know, helping helping the park because they realize it's a benefit to the community. So, um, you know, I think they're more engaged with the park, and the park's more engaged with the community. So that and that's a good thing. Do you have any traditions or fond memories of enjoying the festival? Well, um, much like it is now, back then, in order to pull off a, an event this big, you can't do it with your own park staff. So you reach out to other parks from around, particularly around the district, but also around the state. So it was a, it was a kind of a fun event, and still is, for park service people to get together to help support a park, to work, but to enjoy the music and enjoy the camaraderie uh, being around their fellow park employees. So 
a lot of them would, I've lived on the park, I had a park residence, so a lot of them would stay in my house. And so we still tell about uh, folk, you know, stories of the folk festivals back in the 70s when we were all here. And, and there's still a lot of the same thing going on where we just, it's the social aspect. We come, it's kind of a come support the festival, come support the park. We work hard, but we play hard too and hang around and enjoy each other's company. Can you tell me about someone you met at the festival that's had a big influence on you? Hmm. I don't, I can't really think of anybody that I met at the festival. No, I can't think of anybody. I mean, we met a lot of people through the, through the years, friends, performers like Jeannie Fitchin, who's been uh, performing here for, I don't know how many years, but as a child, she came and performed. I wouldn't say she influenced me, but she is a, a great role model, a great musician, a great person. So do you have any valuable like lessons that you've learned from your time here? Oh, it's, you know, as being in the park service for 37 years, we've, we've had a lot of special events. Every park has their special events, but this one is, is probably the biggest special event held at any park. So the lesson is you can't do it by yourself. You gotta, you have to rely on others to help pull off an event of this magnitude. And obviously at a park like this, um, you have to rely heavily on volunteers. And I think sometimes when you think, when people think of volunteers like, well, what can, you know, they're a volunteer, they're not a paid employee. But I think in this case, there are some volunteers who have been doing it for a long time and probably as important to the festival as the park employees themselves. So I've learned that, you know, volunteers are, are extremely valuable to a, an event like this. Who do you most look forward to seeing when you um, do the festival every year? <laughs> That's a funny, it's kind of funny because um, I, I kind of work a lot. So sometimes I'm like, really didn't get, like yesterday, I didn't really, I had a long day and it was kind of crazy. So I didn't really go out, go out and listen to any music. So I really enjoy meeting my park service buddies, but I also enjoy listening to some of the traditional music, you know, the, the, you know, the John McEwens and the Billy Deans and the John, Jim Staffords, the headliners, but also some of the, the other thing I kind of look forward to is they've always said, you know, this festival can't afford to pay the big, big name performers. So if they can catch somebody as they're coming up in their career before they're real expensive or as they, after they've peaked and they're getting more affordable. So there's a group called the Curries, which is a bunch of some young guys that started performing here as practically kids. And now they're pretty, pretty popular and they travel around the country. So it's kind of cool to see new, new acts, you know, people that are just starting to grow on their own. And I enjoy watching, listening to the kids, kids perform. You know, they're, it's, it's just the, uh, it's the cult, it's the mix of all of the, and this is not just a music festival. That's what's cool about this festival, all the cultural aspects of it and the melting pot, because Florida is a melting pot from people, every nationality and background, and that's what's really cool about this is you can, you can experience all of that right here. So is there like, if you had to create like a motto for the festival based on like that answer, what would you name it? I think the motto they have, which is, I don't remember, it's three words. It's music, heritage, it's a dance. I don't even remember what now, but it's the, I like the motto right now that they have is, and I can't remember what the three words are, but it kind of very inclusive of what this festival is. It is about music, but it's also about heritage and, and uh, dance. And that's, that's the other thing that they're really trying to do is because this festival attracts the young and the old. I mean, there's babies and strollers and there's 
people in their 90s have become, been coming here for 30, 40 years. So it's kind of cool that they attract all those people. But the attendance, uh, we need to keep reaching out to young people. And so I think the festival coordinators have done a good job in trying to, you know, used to, the dance stage used to be like square dance and contra dance, which is still popular. But now they do this techno dance, which draws a lot of college age kids. And so in order for the, the festival to survive, they've got to, got to do that. What's is, your, oh, sorry. Is there any like advice or wisdom that you'd give to younger generations who may want to come to the festival just to keep that legacy alive? Well, come and experience the festival and don't just focus on one thing. Try to try to go out and sit down and listen to a little bit of this, these storytellers or these crafts people because crafts are another thing that are really really dying. I mean, there used to be a guy that made bull whips and I don't know if there is anymore and blacksmiths and basket weaving and 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 maybe not just related to the festival very related to what you guys do at the oral history is pay attention to when your grandparents are telling you a story because I don't know how many people I've heard like gosh I wish I'd have paid closer attention to the stories my grandparents told me and festival stories or whatever um, because once they're gone, they're gone. So if we don't catch them, and you know, I wish more kids would would do an interview with their with their parent or their grandparent, you know. And they, I wish they did it more in school. Say, go home. This is your class assignment. Go home and interview a relative, and and record it. Even if you don't get it transcribed, at least you got the recording. So that's that's kind of my advice to the younger people is. You know, because we all look back and say, I wish I'd have done this. I wish I'd have done that. Do it. What is your go-to festival food? <sighs> I don't know that I have one particular. The one that I miss that used to be, and uh, the uh, local churches used to do a lot of food down at the, marble, the old marble stage. And the, the last year there was not near as many. Hoppin' John, chicken and dumplings, uh, you know, I really, I like that Southern cooking and they know how to cook. And, but it's all good, I'm not a picky eater, so I, my biggest challenge is like, hmm, where do I want to go this time? Cause, you know, and I'm, I don't have a sweet tooth, so I like the traditional foods and, you know, so that's my go-to is just something. And I don't like to eat a big lunch because then I'm like, uh, I'm, take a nap. <laughs> Do you have a favorite stage or act when you come here? Hmm. I, st I still, I don't know. I like the smaller venues. I, it depends on who the act, act is, you know. Probably my all-time favorite, and they were only here one time, was Nitty Gritty Dirt Band, and, you know, I've, I've always enjoyed their music. Um and they played on the amphitheater because they drew a big crowd. But uh, I don't know, I like, I like some of the smaller venues too, we catch, catch somebody. I don't know that I have a really a, a, a favorite. I like them all. I like music of all, all kinds of music. Do you have any funny stories from the festival or anything memorable? Oh. I guess it goes back to when I was first here in 1979 and I had a park house is that, you know, every, everybody wanted to come to the festival, but they wanted to crash at my house. So I had the late night shift and coming in and I like open the door and there's bodies everywhere. <laughs> so it was like kind of wading through the bodies to get to my bedroom, but I don't know. Um, I really can't think of any that are festival related that pop in my mind. What's the most rewarding part about having worked on this? Seeing people happy and having a good time and enjoying themselves and I work, I have multiple roles that as a volunteer, I'm with the Florida Park Service Ranger Association and we're one of the, I'm the volunteer coordinator for this organization. So, 
we provide a benef really good service to the to the public because we we drive these golf carts around and offer transportation. This year's not so bad because it's not as hot, but when it's 90 degrees outside, that you know, some of the, a lot of the elderly people just can't walk. So we're mostly all all the people operating these golf carts are former current or former park employees. You know, we we wear the park rim, park ranger image, and so we're the whole time we're carrying them from the marble stage to their car or wherever we're talking to them and giving them information. So that's very rewarding. And then also coordinate the information area. And so people are, you know, just had some first timers, some people that have been coming for years and years. And so it's disseminating information. And so I think we provide a, a really good service. And I, that's, that's very rewarding to be able to, you know, because most people here rarely do you run into anybody that's angry or irate or, you know, they're just here to have a good time. And our, our, our job is to help them facilitate, facilitate them enjoy the festival. What do you wish people knew about like the festival? Say it's a, a first timer or somebody you're trying to get them to go. What would you tell them? Hmm. Well, I just tell them a little bit about the festival, especially if they have children. You know, this is this is what it's all about. There's, you know, the children's activities has really expanded. There's just so much you can do. I mean, it's not like I said. It's not just about music. And I think once you've been here and experienced, um, you'll want to come back. So it's just a, a matter of giving them a little bit of sampling of this and that and and. Um, you know, they, they have something new every year, and so it's just uh, trying to encourage people to come. And the, and the tough thing is, you know, the accommodations, you know, because it's kind of a rural area, and, you know, find, trying to find a place for them to stay. But, you know, I work mostly with uh, volunteers, and we have a place where they can bring a tent or a camp camper, and and we had some uh, park rangers from Florida Caverns over in Mariana, their first time here and they're like, well, we'll be back. And we have another ranger from South Florida and he said, I'll be back. So it's just getting a, give them a little taste of it. So the next time they come around, they'll want to be more involved. What are some of, um, what, are, what is some advice that you have for future performers? And uh, is there any wisdom that you'd like to pass on to them from what you've seen? Well, I'm not a musician. I enjoy music. <laughs> But I'm not a musician. But um, several years ago, the events coordinator, who I've known her for a long time, Elaine, I guess y'all have met Elaine, asked me if I would sit on, on, they have a performer review committee. So if a performer wants to apply to uh, play here, they have to go through a screening committee. And I was very intimidated because I'm not a musician, I'm not a craftsman, I'm just a park employee. So uh, I'm sitting in this room with a whole room full of, you know, just, you know, the Jeannie Fitchens, the Del Suggs, the people that have been performing here for a long time. And, but, you know, my, as a, a person who loves music and performances, and those performers, our, our uh, views were very similar. And we would listen to a video and we're like, ooh, these kids are good, or these people are good, or, and we, you know, and they try to keep it balanced where they don't have too many of the same kind of acts, too many, um, you know, bluegrass or too many of that. So I felt after the first time doing that, feeling pretty comfortable in there. So I think it's just continuing what doing what they're doing, keeping a, a good balance of types of acts and types of, um, and then, and the other thing, I've, I've met some young people that are just starting out. They're like, wow, I'd really like to play. And I'm like, be per persistent. You may not get in on the first go around, but, um, and it's a great way for performers to be discovered. So if they're one of those uh, young groups that just plays in their local community, you know, they started playing together in high school or whatever. Um, there's a lot of smaller stages here that they can get in. And then next thing you know, they got a following. And there are people, hey, have you heard about that group? 
they're playing over here. So the next thing you know, they're, they've got their own little following. So for, um, you know, just, just be persistent and um, come play. Good. Yeah. So let's see. What would you like your festival legacy to be as a park employee? That I made a difference, that I helped offer a service that was beneficial and um, that I helped the festival be better with me here than, than if I wasn't here. And going back to that other question about the screening committees and all the like younger performers, have you seen like any specific bands kind of like come up through the festival, like any other bands or, you know, could you tell us about your experience with that? Well, I've only been on that committee for a short time, uh, but there, I live in the Tallahassee area. So there's a, a group, the new 76ers that came and performed and they've, they've got quite a following now. And there was another, young group, the well-worn shoes, and they've performed here. And so I'm not one that in my community that goes around and follows a lot of groups around, but um, I've seen a few that have probably, the Folk Festival helped their, helped in their career. And then there's, there's some that I used to enjoy listening to, but who've gotten um, so popular now, they're traveling in Europe and, you know, all over. That, um, that they don't, they're not able to come back. They just, but then there's there's the people like uh, the Billy Deans who, you know, he's got a following. He's, you know, played on the main stages at Grand Ole Opera, but he, he believes strongly in bringing up young, younger musicians. So the people like Billy Dean and Jim Stafford and John McEwen who want to give back to the festival because they know it's important to help, you know, help young musicians because they were there, they were, they were in those shoes. And, and occasionally you see one of them that's playing on the main stage, bring some young musician that they met that they think has temple, has potential, they bring them on the main stage with them and they're like, wow, that person's good. So I think they do, a, you know, because they're performers, so they probably obviously have a bigger impact on these, um, you know, these young people and, you know, like some of the other people have probably said, I've been in so involved so long, there's a lot of the performers that I used to enjoy listening to are no longer with us. You know, the Gamble Rogers, the Don Grooms, the Will McLeans, the, so we don't keep it alive, you know, there's, and I think there's, there was another uh, performer that's been around for a long time that recently passed away, I can't remember who it was, so, you know, we gotta keep it going. So are there any other like last questions or like comments, thoughts, things you wish I asked but didn't? Hmm. I think I think the park staff here needs to be recognized cuz it is it is a huge I mean they they you know everybody has their jobs, you know, day in and day out. But then when the festival rolls around, they start working on this festival. Well, Elaine probably starts working on it. She takes a month off after, after the festival and then she starts working on next year. So I think the average person that comes in and enjoys the festival underestimates what goes into pulling this thing off. And it is a, it's a tremendous undertaking. I mean, from, from the guy that does maintenance to the guy to the gal that cleans the bathrooms, to the guy, you know, to the events coordinator, to everybody, because there's a lot to get ready, and and they have a lot of events that go on in this park. So uh, my hats off to the to the staff that works here to to pull this off and to make it make, make it successful. Well, thank you so much for that. You have well, thank you all for your being here. Thank you. Thank you.